Hey, how you doing? Well, it's Wednesday, and I'm just about to pick the random comment. And then we'll talk a little bit about the mallet, and I'll answer a few of those questions that I didn't answer on the post because I didn't want to screw up uh, the random comment thing by having a bunch of comments from me. So uh, I'm pretty happy to get this over with. Really nice comments, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm a little stressed about it because I feel there's so many nice comments. I'm going to have one happy person and 78 angry people. But uh, what can you do? Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to put a piece of painter's tape right on the computer screen and then just do kind of a roulette thing and see where the scrolling stops. All right, well, I've pulled up my website. I'm going to put a piece of painter's tape on the screen there and we'll click on comments and then scroll up and down kind of like a roulette wheel. And we'll do this for a second or two and then we'll see where it goes. All right. And it looks like Larry Benjamin is the winner. Okay, thanks for the comment, Larry. I'll reply and you can send me your email or you can email me with all of your shipping information. Okay, well now that that's behind me, I can put the computer away and answer a couple of these questions. Uh, but right off the bat, I really want to thank you for participating in this. It's, it's really nice to do something you love, like make a mallet like this, and then have so many people respond to you. It's, it's just a great thing. It's, uh, I know that Steve was talking about community in his last Mere Minute show. And thanks, Steve, because he mentioned, or he didn't mention me, but he put a link to my video. And I, it was great because I got a lot of people who said that they heard about me from Steve Ramsey. And he's got a great show. I love both of his shows. Um, so anyway, thanks again. And now I just want to answer a couple of the questions. And I'm going to go and just look at the notes on my phone and go through them one by one. All right, well, one of the first questions was, What's the applicator that I was using to apply the shellac? And it's just a cotton rag and it's rolled into a ball and then taped off. I'll make one and then I'll talk a little bit more about it. I've got an old t-shirt and I've cut a piece into a square about 10 inches. And I've taken some material from the same shirt and I'm going to fold that and then put it right in the center of the square and then pull the shirt over and then get this nice tight ball at the top here. And I'll just keep spinning it around until it gets nice and tight and then tape it up. And the nice thing about these applicators are you don't have to wash them and you can use them for months. So what I end up doing is I'll use it like I did on the mallet and then I'll put it, I'll put the applicator on top of the shellac and just leave it on the shelf and it'll dry out and the applicator will become very hard. But when I want to use it again, I just pour a little shellac in a container and let it sit there for maybe a half of an hour and that softens up the material and you're ready to use it again. And just a quick note on shellac, uh, it's a beautiful finish, it's a really nice finish. It's not a real strong finish though, so I wouldn't use it say for a kitchen table or a countertop. Uh, I often use it on the sides of frames. Uh, this is a frame that I'm making this week and I gold leaf this frame. So before I got into the gold leafing, I wanted to seal the frame, and it was just really easy to seal the frame with this shellac and this applicator. Another question was regarding these white cracks or these checks that you'll sometimes get in Purple Heart. And if I'm building a piece of furniture, this is something I'm going to try to avoid. And it's probably a good reason why I've had these boards for so long. Uh, but they are tight. It doesn't feel like the wood's going to break apart. So when I made the mallet, I tried to put the check in the handle as opposed to the head of the mallet. I used an electric burning pen to put my name in the handle. And you can find these online or any arts and crafts store. And this one was right around $20. And then another question was about the price. And you know, I really don't know what Purple Heart is going for today. This board's got to be, I must have had this for almost 10 years. And it may have been one of those odd pieces of wood that was in one of the bins. And that's why I bought it because it was only $5.65. So, uh, oh, I just got a splinter. That's the thing, you have to be careful with pur Purple Heart for splinters. Uh, so then, let's move on to another question. And then I had a few suggestions that maybe I should do charity auctions like Steve ramsey has been doing. Uh, and I think that's really cool, and I'd love to do that. But I just don't have the audience that Steve has, so maybe sometime in the future, I hope to do that. And also, I, I don't make that many uh, small things like this that are easy to ship. But yeah, I definitely would be into that. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Now, as far as uh, the project that I'm working on this week, I'm making a cabinet to store all these small paint cans, little paint cans like this. I'll show you where it's gonna go. 
Well, right off the bat, you might notice that I painted this wall here, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint my way around the shop as I get the shop organized and cleaned up. And so what I want to do here is make a cabinet that's just about 20 inches wide and about 6 inches deep. I just want a really shallow cabinet that doesn't take up a lot of space in the barn, but then we'll store all those paint cans. And that way I can clean up that whole wall that's uh, in front of me but behind the camera. Um, if I get that video done on Friday, I'll put it up. If not, it should be up on Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.